Yo, I'm about to head out for the day, but before I do, I finally got a new battery for my Pokewalker. It's been years since I've used this thing, and I don't even remember what Pokemon I have on it right now, but I'm gonna turn it on and find out. Oh, it's Tauros. Juan, what do you think of that? For today's episode, I want to do some research. One of the most common questions we get asked is, what do the footsteps under nearby Pokemon represent? Well, we know they represent distance, but the question is, how much? In the beta test, we saw an actual distance, measured in meters. Pokemon would spawn when you were about 40 meters away, and the maximum distance they'd show up on the radar is 200 meters. My guess is that each footstep represents about 50 meters, but we've seen a lot of numbers thrown out online. Today, I'm here at Heritage Park in Irvine, California to find out the truth. For my experiment today, I'm using two phones. I'll use one to find the exact location of a Pokemon, and use the other to track the distance as I move closer to it. So right now I'm standing directly on top of an Ekans. I'm going to use my research assistant Pikachu here to mark the Ekans location. Now I'm going to walk in a straight line directly away from the Ekans. So what I've done is walked directly away from the Ekans until it started showing three footsteps on my nearby Pokemon list. I'm going to walk straight back towards it, and every time the footsteps change, I'm going to place down one of these buckets as a marker. The Ekans has since despawned from the map, which Pokemon do after about five minutes. But I still have my Pikachu here, and I have the buckets laid out, so now I'm going to open up a different app to track the distance as I walk to each of the markers. The distance from the Ekans to the first bucket, where the one footstep appeared, is about 40 meters. The distance to the second marker is less than 20 meters, which is a little bit strange, but I have a feeling it might have something to do with slow communication times when updating a nearby Pokemon's distance. We're going to do this test a couple times just to be sure. The distance from the second to the third marker is about 30 meters, which brings the total distance from the Ekans to right here, where three footprints appear, to 90 meters. Okay, I'm standing directly on top of a Pidgey. Same as last time, I'm going to place Pikachu down as a marker and walk directly away. Okay, I walked a lot slower this time when placing my buckets, so me and Pikachu are going to go for a walk now and measure the distance. Again, we have a distance of about 40 meters to the first footstep. And again, less than 20 meters to the point where the second footstep appears. Once again, just about 90 meters to the point where the third footstep appears. I'm actually really interested by this. So it seems like the footsteps don't measure equal distances. We're going to do this one more time just to check our results. For our third try, we found an Eevee. I'm going to place Pikachu down here to mark it, and then I'm going to walk straight away. I'm gonna name you Professor Eevee. Oh, it's too long. Thanks for helping me with my research, Professor. Okay, Pikachu, third try. Let's see how this goes. Again, 40 meters to the first footstep. 20 meters to the second footstep, and just about 30 meters to the third footstep. So after a day of research, we have some interesting data, I think it's time to take it back to the lab for analysis. And if you're looking for Bulbasaurs, come check out Heritage Park in Irvine, there are tons of them here. To review the methodology that I used for this experiment, I found a Pokemon's location and placed Pikachu there as a marker. 
I then walked directly away from the Pokemon in a straight line. Once the Pokemon was showing three footprints on my nearby Pokemon list, I turned around and walked directly back towards it, placing a marker each time the footprints changed. I then measured the distance from the Pokemon to each of the markers. After going over the numbers, here are the final measurements for each of the three Pokemon we tracked. These average out to... And when we round to the nearest 10, we get 40, 60, and 90 meters. What we can conclude from this is that you'll need to be within 40 meters of a Pokemon in order for it to spawn. If it's showing one footprint, it's between 40 and 60 meters away. If it's showing two footprints, it's between 60 and 90 meters away. And if it's showing three footprints, it's over 90 meters away. Hopefully that answers one of the most common questions we've seen about Pokemon Go. Before I end the episode, I'm going to choose a winner for our last shirt giveaway, and we're choosing this one from our Twitter followers. So here we go. Mandrex92, congratulations, you just won a shirt. We're going to tweet at you and find out what size and what color you want, and we'll be getting that out to you as soon as possible. Remember guys, we are still giving away a Pokemon Go Plus as soon as it ships, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned to find out when that happens. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Who, me? Yo guys, check out how accurate the location mapping is for Pokemon. I just caught this Paris. There's a mushroom growing in the grass right here. Crazy. Niantic, you're crazy.